when we went to training camp at LMU, one of the guys that stood out was him. Like the way he worked with the DBs, he was, you know, and, and he had their attention. He was working with Quinn Lake. He was working with some of the other guys. It was really impressive to see him, you know, take court there and, and just, you know, have that presence about him and the way he teaches uh, the DBs. Yeah, and it says a lot that Sean McVay, you know, gave gave him the opportunity to be the head coach uh, of the night. And I don't think he's ever done that. He's had like maybe uh, I could be wrong, but I think he mostly has you know assistant coaches call plays that don't normally get yeah. to go call plays. Like, hey, you know, Sean McVay calls a bunch of uh, offensive plays in the season, so you get an opportunity OC to call plays, or hey, defensive coordinator or defensive assistant call plays. But today it was the full show for Aubrey Pleasant, so I can't recall. Uh, when during these opportunities where Sean McVay went up to the booth and was just helping out in the booth. And also he was available to be next door to the Rams broadcast, had a sit down interview during the preseason game. So he's finding new ways to help and, and, and create opportunities for assistant coaches. So I think Sean McVay is one of the best at doing that. And I think it was, I think it was last year. SI asked me to have uh, this story where we all picked uh terrible ideas or don't sound so terrible when you think about it and mine was not allowing rookie head coaches to call plays that the assistant coaches call plays because when you're a rookie head coach there's too much going on but also yeah. when you're when you're hogging the play calling duties you don't allow the pl- other coaches under you to flourish and develop because everybody wants to see you having on their resume play calling yeah. experience so that was kind of my bad take to not to have like a ban for for head coaches not to call plays hey but to Sean McVay's credit you know he is hogging it during the season, but he's allowing coaches like Aubrey Pleasant to shine in the preseason. And then that way, when you go into his interviews, you can show, hey, look what I did uh, against the Chargers here on August 17, 2024, where guys like Speed stepped up or or I think Watkins got a sack or is it Hampton got a sack? Guys you never heard of, but they played well under me and I was able to run Chris Shula's scheme to perfection. Yeah, and Chris Shula is another guy that, you know, he's he looks like you know, they're not missing a beat without Raheem Morris and – you know, to your point, I mean, we saw how much, you know, Les Need and Sean McVay pushed for Raheem Morris, and that's part of the reason that he got the job with Atlanta was because of how, how much they push guys to get jobs outside. They they don't they, – they don't – yes, it sucks to lose guys, but at the same time, it, they they really enjoy having people go out there and get jobs. And, uh, you know, I don't think they care – you know, it, it's, it's a nice reward that they get – third round picks out of it but at the same time you know for them it's 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 about building you know coaches and building that coaching tree for McVay and he's done a really good job with it if you look around it's one of the most successful trees out there right now honestly maybe a part of why Sean McVay has been so successful especially at a young age in the NFL is because the trust that he has in coaches and also the way he scouts coaches too where he has these interviews where he's not afraid to go outside the network and the contact book and okay let me get guys from the patriots i haven't really worked with or or you know whatever scheme it is and and and, and allowing these guys to get my opportunities because sometimes when you're, you're you know what, what's the word like it's a control freak where you want to do more where you're like hey i'm the guy who does it that gets you in trouble so you know for the most part it kind of seems like mcveigh is doing everything offensively but like i'm sure you know th- these like these guys are getting jobs partly because they're under McVay's guidance in the tree, but some of these guys are succeeding because they were allowed big opportunities under McVay. They were ready to go, and that's a credit to him. So, yeah, it's, it's the preseason. I know that we're, maybe we're, we're kind of looking for topics to talk about, but I think this is a big, big thing that he's doing with Aubrey Pleasant shining. We saw it with Shula. We saw it with uh, Eric Henderson before he went to USC. We saw it with Raheem Morris. Uh, I want to say... The former OC that um, is escaping my my mind right now, but he went to Kentucky. Uh, Liam uh, yes. Cohen, he also Liam got Cohen an opportunity. With, so he's been doing this. Yes. Yeah, he's been doing a lot of this. Actually, yes, yeah, with the Bucks now, with Baker Mayfield. You are correct, Victor. So uh, he's been doing this for many years. Yeah, and I mean, like I said, and, and the list goes on and on. Um, you know, from you know Kevin O'Connell with with the with with the Vikings. You have Zach Taylor with the Bengals. I mean, mm-hmm. he's like I said you go down the list of his coaching tree and it's really impressive. And it tells you that, and and it helps that he's been doing this for a while that there's no ego with him. And I think one of the, the, the best front offices out there is when they can collab, they can bring guys in 
and they can have, you know, one of the things that I've been really impressed with McVay is like, he noticed that people were, they had caught up to the 11 personnel, right? So he's like, look, I got to change it because look, the next, the next younger coaches, the younger, the younger guys, there's going to be younger McVay's out there. There's going to be younger, you know, McDaniels and Shanahan's who are going to out scheme him. And he's, he's swallowed his pride and he's like, okay, I'm going to change my, the way we run the ball and we're going to change our offense to, to kind of, you know, be able to beat the, the uh, new schemes that are coming around because the NFL, one of the things I've learned Gilbert is that if you're, if you're a person who doesn't, you know, evolve you're gonna get left behind we've seen it with belichick offensively defensively that was one of the things that i was always really impressed with belichick is that he was in the league for 40 years 50 years and then you still couldn't out scheme him he just didn't he just wasn't a someone that was really good at being able to hire an offensive guy and that's where things kind of fell apart for him but defensively he always evolved and that's what you need to do as a coach yeah, and that's why the Rams were able to uh, turn it around uh, last year after going five and whatever, 12 to the 10 victories they got last year. So, you know, he's one of the best coaches, Sean McVay, that is, and he has a, a way about it, and it's been working so far. And, and honestly, Victor, I think the NFC is going to be it's going to be tough to predict because I, I feel like with the AFC, it's a little easier, especially because you, you could pencil in the Chiefs there at pretty much every, every year. But, you know, with the, with the Rams, they got to maybe face the Cardinals or maybe even the Seahawks or maybe... Obviously, the 49ers are going to be pretty good, but then you also got, you know, the, the NFC East. You got the Cowboys, you got the Eagles, and you just never know what's surprising. Obviously, the Detroit Lions, we're going to see off the bat week one. But uh, that's why when you're in these tough conferences or tough divisions, you got to evolve right, right away. 